Let's look a bit more in detail to these frames that we use. And first of all, the management frames. You saw some of those cases, right? You are approaching a network, and you want to know if there is an SSID you can join. And what you do in that case is that you listen. And you listen because the access point every 100 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds by default, but that's something you can change. You can change it, but you should not. The access point is going to send a frame that contains information about the network. Because you know a switch, you can see it. There is a green light, you know you can plug. But an access point, it may be behind the ceiling, so you may not know there is one. So every 100 milliseconds by default, the access point is going to send a beacon saying, hey, I'm here, this is what I do, and these are the speeds I do, these are the characteristics of my network. So that's something you can use to discover the SSID, because the beacon is going to mention the SSID, among other things. That's how you know on your laptop that there is that SSID available, but your laptop is going to learn a lot more. It's going to learn, of course, the MAC address of the access point, but also what speeds are allowed, what security is in there, etc. OK, then if you don't hear the access point, maybe you can ask the question. Say, do you do that SSID? And that question is called a probe request. You just choose one channel, and on that channel, you send a question out saying, is anybody doing that SSID? You can target a specific access point saying, do you do that SSID? Or you can send it as a general broadcast. Anybody doing that SSID? In both cases, it's called a probe request. When that happens, the access point is supposed to respond if it does it, right? If it doesn't do the SSID, it doesn't respond. But if it does it, it's going to respond saying, yes, I do the SSID, and this is how my SSID is set. And that's a probe response. The probe response and the beacons you see are very close in structure because they say the same thing. This is what the network is, this is what it does, etc. The only difference really is that the beacon is unsolicited, it's sent every 100 milliseconds, whereas the probe response is a response to a question. But in both cases, you say almost the same things. I say almost because if you look into it, there is a tiny difference. Because when you send a beacon, you send that broadcast to everybody, but that's everybody who is not associated to your cell, but that's also everybody who is already associated to your cell. So what do you need to say? A lot of things, including the network characteristics, but also a few things that are only useful for the people who are already associated to you. When you send a probe request, you say, this is the SSID I'm looking for. Do you do it? And the only other thing you need to say is, uh, by the way, I support these protocols. You know, I support these speeds. These are the speeds you can use to talk back to me if you want to reply. So when you reply with a probe response, of course, you're going to use one of these speeds, but you're also going to repeat network specifications. So let's look at these frames more in detail. And you don't need to know all these details by heart, of course. I just show them to you to show you that there is a tiny difference between the beacon on the left and the probe response on the right. If you look at the probe request in the middle, its structure is obvious, right? You just look for the SSID, and then you tell the speed at which you can be receiving the response. But if you look at the beacon and the probe response, you see it's almost identical in structure, except there is one thing that the beacon has that the probe response does not have. And that's what we call the team traffic indication map. Stations can sleep, that is to say they can go to dozing state to save power. And when they do so, they tell the access point saying, I'm going to sleep, and that's a bit in the header. That is the management bit that can be set to one or zero to say if you're going to stay awake or if you're going to go to sleep. And when stations sleep, when the access point keep on beaconing, if it has any traffic buffer for the sleeping stations, it's going to say which stations have traffic buffered in this traffic indication map. So you see that team is useful for stations already clients of the access point. Of course, it has nothing to do in the probe response because the client probing is not associated yet, so that client does not need to have any information about buffer traffic. There is no traffic for that client yet. So that's why there is this tiny difference between the beacon and the probe response. But for the rest, they are exactly the same. Now, when you look at connecting to the access point, you are going to follow a choreography that is always the same. Authentication request, to which you have the authentication response. And then association request, to have an association response. Don't get it wrong. The authentication request had nothing to do with security initially. What this was about is making sure that you had the right physical characteristics to talk to the access point. So you were just sending an 802.11 frame to show that you were an 802.11 device. And the AP was validating with its response that you were an 802.11 device. 
Then later on, security people said, well, authentication, that's security. There should be security there. So some security aspects were added. But keep that in mind. Initially, it's just validating that you are a valid 802.11 device. And if you are, then you say, I want to join your cell. That's the association request. And the AP responds, here you go. This is your authentication ID. You are station number five in my cell. And that's the association response. So when we look at those frames, you see the authentication is just a simple frame that says, I want to be authenticated with the 802.11 header we saw before. That body here only makes sense if there is any additional security. Most of the time, if it's open, there is no challenge. There is just, is it a question or is it a response? And the status being a success when it's a response. When you look at the association, though, it's a bit more complex, right? Of course, you're going to say, this is the SSID I want to join. These are the speeds I can do, the data rates I support. And then you're going to add a few things about your capability, what you can do and cannot do. And there's a lot of things that can be said there, and it's beyond the scope of the CCNA. And if the response, of course, the AP is going to say, OK, this is what I can do, and this is your status. You are associated or not. And if you're associated, this is your ID. This is your identifier number five in my cell. And the AP is also going to communicate its own rates because maybe it doesn't have the same data rate supported as the client does. So they need to adjust each other's expectations so they have a common ground of rates that they both support. Once you're connected, of course, you can be disconnected, and that can take a few forms. The authentication message, where you drop entirely, or disassociation. And you remember, authentication comes first, and then association comes, which means that if you are disassociating somebody, they are still authenticated, but they still need to reassociate. Of course, if you deauthenticate them, they have to reauthenticate and also reassociate. So it's a more complete way of sending people out of the cell. And of course, you can send, when you're deassociated, a reassociation request when you were there and you're just coming back, to which you receive, of course, a reassociation response. If you look at the frames, the ones which are interesting are the deauthentication and deassociation. Because you see, the only thing you say basically is why. So you are out for that reason. When you send your request, the reassociation request and the reassociation response is exactly like the association request and the association response. The subtype is different, so we know you're coming back, but the structure, you, the things you exchange, are exactly the same. Let's look at one special case, the action frame, and this is a bit different from the others. So there are, again, many, many types, more than 10 types, 15 or so. And there are many questions you can ask. One of them can be something you may have heard about is 802.11k, by which the station can, among other things, ask the access point and say, you know, I want to roam. What other access points are there around here on what channels? So I don't have to scan all the channels. And then your access point can respond saying, OK, here is the list of access points I know of. So you see, it's an action frame because you send that frame and you expect the other side to do something with that information that is meaningful for you. And because it's very wide, the structure of the management frame action type is very open. It says the type is action. And then you see it says, then there is a vendor specific element that you can add there to exchange whatever you need to tell the other side that they need to do for you. And that's it. So it's very open because there are many, many types for many, many scenarios. And many, many certifications are using this or that type of action frame to trigger this or that reaction at the station or the access point level.